athletes spend their lives training and working towards their chance to compete in the Paralympics. But now, amidst a pandemic, they have to continue to train and prepare themselves for a competition that some say may not happen. I'm Alex Smythe. Join me as we speak with athletes, trainers, and national organizers to find out how they're staying focused on their goal in a time of such uncertainty. This is Paralympics Postponed, the long road to Tokyo. August 24th to September 5th, 2020. Those were the dates in which the world was supposed to watch the top para-athletes from around the globe compete for gold in Tokyo, Japan. Instead of the stadiums being filled with screaming fans, they lay silent as the world deals with a global pandemic, the likes of which has not been seen in over a hundred years. On March 22nd, 2020, Canada announced that it would not send its athletes to compete in Tokyo. Soon after, the Olympic and Paralympic Games were officially postponed until 2021. When the athletes heard the news, their reactions were varied. For para-athletics runner Nate Reach, it was devastating. Yeah, that first initial reaction was numbness, would be the word that I use to describe that feeling. And the only other time I've had that feeling was uh, right after I got hit in the head by the golf ball and slowly my body became paralyzed. Bocce player Allison Levine shares some of Nate's disappointment. It was a little bit of grief for, you know, everything you've been working for for four years suddenly put on hold. But it was also a huge relief. Um, obviously, when you go to Paralympics, you want to be at your absolute best. And I hadn't been in a gym for, for two months at that time. So it was a little bit of a relief. Parajudo's Priscilla Gagne understood why the decision was made. Of course, you're a little bit sad. Um, just like any athlete would be, or anybody who's looking forward to something. But it's more than just the, our performance, you know, it's, it's everybody's lives that are affected. To get a better understanding of why Canada became the first country to back out of the Games, I spoke with Karen O'Neill, the CEO of the Canadian Paralympic Committee, about that decision. It became increasingly apparent, Alex, that the health and safety of our athletes, and at the time, as we were in discussion with the COC, the Canadian Olympic Committee, is that the environment and the training opportunities and competition opportunities that our Canadian athletes were participating in in their final stages of preparation for Tokyo were becoming less safe, so that their health was becoming uh, at risk and compromised because of COVID, and at that time, it was really just unfolding in the first phases and us understanding even more that we thought it's time, we need to call it. This decision, while difficult to make, was necessary, even if it meant making the call before the International Paralympics Committee postponed the Games. Our responsibility and our purview is the care and support and protection of, in this case, the Paralympic athletes. We felt that it was to the untenable level of conditions and acceptance for us to say we could honorably and responsibly support a Team Canada at this time with these current conditions. All decisions that you make, everything has a cost. We realized the cost did not merit supporting sending a team. So that was really the tipping point for us. And even now, we are still in very either um, athletes trading on their own and or a very curated and managed uh, bubble approach, whereby even for team sports, it's very curated, it's individual, and it's maintaining the integrity of all the, uh, uh, the health recommendations to manage health and safety in view of COVID. So I can say it was clearly the right decision, a tough decision at the time. If I had to do it again, we would do it again in a heartbeat. The decision was done with the input of the Athletes' Council. As a member, Allison says the vote was unanimous. For us emotionally, it was, it was difficult because all our heart wants to be there competing. But um, we're all, you know, 
adults that know that this situation is bigger than sport. Uh, people are dying across across the world, and it would be no time to be holding a sporting event, uh, not just because of the logistics and the safety of it, but um, you know, it, it's a humanitarian crisis. There's no way we could be thinking about sport in this moment. I thought I would be going to the Olympics and the Paralympics since I was about three or four years old. And so, um, you know, that was just a lifelong goal. But I think with perspective um, after a couple of days passed through and that at the end of the day, sport is really important. And it's really important to me, but human beings are so much more important, uh, human lives so much more important than any medal or any performance that I can ever put out. And while the athletes may have been shaken by this decision temporarily, they quickly set their sights on a new goal. One thing I tell people all the time is to enjoy the journey because the destination is not always what we think it will be or maybe it'll change. And so just, I think, following my own advice and just enjoying the journey, you know, seeing each day as a gift and looking forward to being able to come back uh, next year uh, with a vengeance. I'm really excited to see some of the performances uh, that I think are going to be delivered in Tokyo. So I'm thinking, if anything, it's going to be enhanced, particularly with this additional time um, and how our entire sports system has rallied around the athletes to ensure that there's a continuity of their training and focus forward on competition in Tokyo. While the sites are set on 2021, Allison has a strong message on behalf of the athletes hoping to go for gold. We're working so hard for 2021 to, to happen. We want to be there representing our country. But if people don't respect social distancing, if people aren't wearing their masks, people aren't following the guidelines, um, our chances just get lower and lower and lower. So please, you know, for the sake of the athletes and for the sake of everyone, for the health, you know, please follow what the government is saying and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, make Canada proud and represent you in, in Tokyo 2021. Paralympics postponed, the long road to Tokyo will return. You're watching Paralympics postponed, the long road to Tokyo. Before the break, we heard from athletes and national organizers about the impact of postponing the Paralympic Games by a year. But don't think for a second anyone is taking their foot off the gas. Athletes are training harder than ever, even if it means getting a little creative. When I first started training at home, um, the first two times I was actually um, kind of dumbfounded of how am I going to do this? <laughs> because normally I have someone to, to pick up my balls for me. Um, when I'm sitting in my wheelchair, I can't reach the floor. Um, so that was the first obstacle. For bocce player Allison Labine, training in isolation had a number of unique challenges to overcome. So I actually reached out to my dad and was taking like an old mop handle, attaching it to an old CD case and built me this super cool like ball picker upper device. Um, so that was the first, you know, task complete. And I felt like, okay, now I'm able to throw some balls at least. Uh, when it wasn't so hot out, I was able to throw balls in the hallway of the apartment complex. Um, so I had a nice long corridor. And so that wasn't, you know, too bad. But then when in summer hit, um, there's no air conditioning in the hallway. So my apartment kind of turned into a makeshift boccia court. Um, I think I have about five meters space and moved the air conditioner over to the side. Um, my biggest challenge in my apartment came with four paws and a tail <laughs> in the terms of my service dog, who seems to enjoy lying down directly where I'm going to be throwing. <laughs> now, at, at practice, she knows that she's not allowed on the bocce court whatsoever, but here in my apartment, it doesn't really look like a bocce court. It's just, you know, my apartment. And the minute I would start throwing balls without fail, she would lie down right in the middle of the way. So that was that was pretty difficult, but after you know a few times of her getting you know hit in the snout with a few balls, she kind of she kind of moved over. Necessity is the mother of invention, and with athletes scattered across the country, each person has unique hurdles that they have to overcome. For para athletics runner Nate Reach, finding a track wasn't his biggest problem. Come on, Nate! I was fortunately enough to live on the island where the cases never got too bad. So 
we had, I have a track about 200 meters from my house. Um, and so that was, uh, that was open almost the entire time. I couldn't train with anyone um, or have my coaches out at practice, um, especially it was a little bit harder because my coaches are national coaches um, for Athletics Canada. So they weren't um, allowed to be at the track for a couple months. There was no weight, there was no weight room access, which was probably the most difficult part of the actual training component. But he tackled this problem head on. The aerobic side had always been my weakness and something that I actually dread, dreaded for so long. And so uh, Heather Henninger, who was my coach, we sat down and said, let's, let's really try to use this year um, to allow me to perform the best at Tokyo. And really, I have huge goals. Sometimes if you um, can kind of re re remove yourself from the actual time and just go off feel, a lot of times you perform better and you actually have more fun. And a lot of times a happy athlete is a fast athlete. For non-contact sports, there are pretty clear workarounds when it comes to training. But what is the solution for para judo's Priscilla Gagne? Judo is going to be the last sport that will be allowed to train again. Right now, we're basically just doing cardio because you can't lift a person with social distance. You can't choke a person in social distance. You can't, you can't combat. That's where we are right now, and we'll probably be like that for another few months. Uh, so at home, I actually reached out immediately to one of my trainers from Ottawa, my fitness trainer, and asked him to put me together a five-day program uh, for weights and uh, strength and conditioning. And so he did that for me, and it was all things I could do at home. I sent him a list of all the things I had. So he created that for me, and then I used um, Facebook Messenger to video chat with my coach as I did the routine. So it kept me motivated. For Priscilla, the shutdown had a silver lining, allowing her to address a long-standing injury. I had a tear in my labrum, but it's been a long time. So I, I've been training on, on it for quite a while. By the time we realized it was torn, uh, it was so close to competition to, to qualify for Tokyo that I needed to get surgery scheduled for after Tokyo. So I've been training on it for, since then, uh, and it's only gotten worse, obviously. And so when I went in for surgery, um, they, they went in and they told me they were gonna probably stitch it and all this, but when I woke up from surgery, they said, it was torn in every direction, so they couldn't stitch it. So they just removed the damage part, which actually kind of worked out because the healing process speeds up quite a bit <laughs> when you don't have stitches on the inside of you. So they, they removed the damage part and um, sewed me back up on the outside. And uh, here we are. So no, um, no major complications or anything like that. I had only two very small scars and I've already almost back to normal. Okay, good. Good? Yep. With each athlete training and facing different challenges, CEO Karen O'Neill says the CPC and other national bodies have worked to ensure all their needs are met during this unprecedented time. Whether it be ourselves, the Canadian Olympic Committee on the podium and or their governing sport body, everybody stepped up for training and support. And that help is greatly appreciated. I give huge credit to uh, CPC and Bocce Canada for the way they've handled this situation. Uh, right from, from the beginning, they've made it super clear that um, uh, our, our, our lives as athletes have been completely turned upside down and that we're here to support you through that. They've been emailing us links, all kinds of resources, mental health resources, ideas to train at home, uh, things that you can do, like group talking in groups, seminars, um, all kinds of Zoom calls that you can join in on, making sure your voice is heard, your concerns are heard, and answering any questions that we might have. So they've been just bending over backwards and without me asking, they're just, um, Judo Canada and the CPC have been absolutely phenomenal. And, and I, I'm, I'm so glad that they, they're shining so bright in this time. Stay tuned for more Paralympics Postponed the long road to Tokyo. You're watching Paralympics Postponed, the long road to Tokyo. Welcome back. We met with athletes competing in individual sports and learned about the challenges they face as they train for Tokyo. Now, 
Let's Talk Teams. There are a number of team sports that require close contact, communication, and for teammates to be in sync. Wheelchair rugby is easily one of the most physical sports at the Summer Games, and it's hard to replicate the in-game scenarios while practicing social distancing. So what is our national team doing to train and prepare? For Mike Whitehead, the situation is nothing new. I've been decentralized training in the U.S. for many years now, so I have a good system, support system in place. I have a gym in the garage, uh, you know, the personal trainer. We did Zoom. So I, I don't feel I missed a beat. It may be nothing new for Mike, but for teammate Eric Furtado Rodriguez, it has been an adjustment, especially when they can't train as a team. I'm one of the least functioning players on the team, so I don't have as many muscles that I need to work out. So a few dumbbells and uh, a set of indoor rollers, which are like a bike trainer for a wheelchair, and I'm good to go. But uh, the team aspect of it, like training with your teammates on court, banging around, going through different scenarios, not having that was really, really challenging. Yeah, so I, I think what we really try and do is just be as supportive as possible and to help them manage the situation the best as possible. Joe Lesnar is the mental performance consultant with the Canadian wheelchair basketball team. And he tells me about the importance of communication, especially when it comes to maintaining those key relationships between teammates. It's very challenging, right? Um, they're used to being in a day-to-day -day environment or at a camp where they can uh, hang out with their friends and their teammates. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier to connect that way. Um, but I think some things that can be done now, luckily we have some fantastic technology that allows us all to stay connected. And that translates to the wheelchair rugby team as well, as Eric explains. Our team is really tight knit. We've got a, a WhatsApp group where we can kind of shoot the proverbial poop and uh, poke fun at each other whatever time we feel like, uh, just like as if we were in the locker room. Um, we also had more structured team meetings on a weekly basis to go over uh, the more tactical aspects of the game and uh, just go over game film and look over mistakes or things we did well and things we need to keep doing well. So we did our best with what we had. I think for athletes in particular, you know, sort of one thing that I discuss with them is, you know, you don't need to be a perfect athlete right now, right? When we're talking about high performance, everyone has really high expectations for how they want to perform. Um, and, you know, they all want to be the best athlete in person that they can be. And obviously in a time like this, that's very, very challenging. Uh, so one thing that we talk about is just uh, sort of shifting those expectations and understanding that, hey, yeah, like I don't necessarily have to be perfect right now. And it's OK for me to kind of take a little bit of a break and take advantage of this opportunity to do some other things. For Mike, that means a chance to study some tape. I'm a rugby video nerd. A lot of us are and I can you know, I can just go down, you know, we can watch a minute of play and talk an hour. And I love doing that. So we've had more video discussions and I think maybe some of the younger guys have turned into hopefully some video nerds too. Eric knows when the team does meet up again, they won't miss a beat, thanks to their tight bond. Well, I feel like it's, it's gonna be pretty seamless. We're like a family, we know each other really well and we're just gonna pick up where we left off. We're not training at the level we were or we're not putting in as hard of training sessions as we were before, because it's just physically impossible to do that at home. But uh, we'll just pick up where we left off. Mike and Eric may be eager to return to the court and train with the team again, but what is the CPC's outlook on the Paralympics taking place in 2021? CEO Karen O'Neill explains. We get up every day right now uh, with the plans that there will be a set of games in Tokyo uh, this time next year. So we're waiting for some additional information right now. We know the games are going to look a little different, but we are full steam ahead in recasting all of our plans for Team Canada to be over in Tokyo. While the plan is to be in Tokyo, I wanted to find out when a final decision on sending athletes to the games has to be made. I would say the last possible date is probably our earliest plane ticket because many of our teams head over there for staging and depending upon the sport, some of the larger teams can go over because of the time difference and the accommodation required 
three, even four weeks beforehand. So I would say from just a logistical competition standpoint, that would probably be the latest date uh, from an athlete performance standpoint. And Eric reassures me that if the team does go, they'll be ready. This extra year that we have to train is gonna make us even that much more of a threat to get on that podium. We needed another year, you know, I feel to uh, fine tune that instrument. So I think uh, it, it couldn't have happened at a better time. For para-athletics runner, Nate Reach, he'll be ready to give it his all on the world's biggest stage. I'm gonna prepare like I'm gonna be competing unless I'm told otherwise. I'm not being there just to be there. I'm going there to win. Paralympians are a special breed. Their focus and will to win is difficult to match. But in the midst of a global pandemic, there are things that they cannot control. For bocce player Allison Levine and para judo's Priscilla Gagne, they are able to step back and keep things in perspective, even if it means putting Paralympic dreams on hold. You know, the situation, we have no control. Uh, the world is going to decide, the pandemic is going to decide whether it goes along or not. I got to look at the bigger picture. You know, my life is more important. My teammates' lives are more important. And um, there'll always be other competitions. Eventually, COVID will go away. It's just a question of when. And if I have to wait, you know, five years, that's what I'll do. I think that if this does get canceled completely, I pray that the athletes will join together in unity as an example to the rest of the world on how to get back up and how to find the good in, in, in the bad and how to take what you need to grow and to learn and to move on and to bring more love and direction in the world. Host, Alex Smythe. Producers, Ted Cooper and Alex Smythe. Videographer, Matthew McGurk. Media Accessibility Specialist, M. Williams. Editor, Manuel Grados Andrade. Audio Post, Mark Phoenix. Senior Producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, Accessible Media, Inc.